Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be making an electric skateboard using Inertion's R-Spec hub motors and the Foxbox Unity. These products are no longer available as Inertion is no longer a company, but you can buy these products online on places such as eBay or the eSkate forum from people that are willing to sell them to you used or on an old Raptor. This was a super fun and easy build to make as it uses hub motors and everything is very plug and play and easy to use. So without further ado, let's get into the video and how we built this skateboard. The deck that we're going to be using for this build is the Ohmboard Bamboo GT Skateboard deck. You'll notice that it looks a lot like a Bamboo GTX deck from Evolve, and that's because it's meant to. The deck has a really nice grip tape pattern and it makes it look a little bit special. It's also nice that it's dropped through and low to the ground. The motors are really the star of the show in this video. We are going to be using the Inertion R-Spec hub motors. We have the upgraded 97mm hubs for added smoothness. Unfortunately, these motors are really hard to come by at the moment due to the fact that Inertion doesn't exist anymore. These motors were once used on the claimed Inertion Raptor 2 and Inertion Raptor 2.1 and rose it to the top of the electric skateboard popularity charts. The first thing that you really notice about these motors is how massive and powerful they are. They just feel like they're going to be strong. The battery that we're going to be using for this build is a 12S4P Samsung 30Q pack from Mboards. We didn't use our own pack for this build because unfortunately we're out of stock at the moment. This 518 watt hour monster battery pack comes with an integrated BMS, a charge port, and a charger, as well as an XT60 connector for discharge. The pack will be great because it will take the rider to high speeds and have lots of range. The ESC that we're going to be using for this build is the Foxbox Unity, which was once considered the golden standard of electric skateboard controllers, and to some extent, it still is. Again, unfortunately due to inertia disappearance, the Foxbox Unity is really hard to come by at the moment. This was our first time getting our hands on a Unity, so it was very exciting to see all of the features that it has. Everything is very neat and tidy, and very compact for a dual motor ESC that's so powerful. One of the nicest features about the Unity is that it has a port for its own built-in power switch. Ours didn't come with one, so we soldered our own together, and in our review of the Unity, we'll be covering how we did this. This power switch plugs straight into the 5-pin JST on the Fock box, and this way you can power your board on with a simple switch as opposed to needing one that can handle high currents. The enclosure that we are using for this build is an enclosure that we purchased from Psycho Tiller over a year ago, and it's made from 1 8 inch ABS plastic. You can buy a similar enclosure today from a place like West Coast Standard, which you'll have to contact through social media. The front truck and wheels on this build are going to be the front truck from the Inertion Raptor 2 and 97mm R-Spec Ghost wheels. They came from an Inertion Raptor 2.1, just like the hubs. Here you can see that the Inertion hubs in the rear are much thicker than the wheels in the front. Okay, now to actually start building this board, we first placed the battery in the edge of the enclosure and then plugged in the Unity using the XT60 connectors. We then mounted the trucks to the deck, but we didn't top mount them just like the deck's meant to. This is because the phase wires from the hub motors come out in a way that wouldn't allow us to. We also put in some quarter inch riser pads to make the ride smoother. As you can see here, the phase wires come out of the top of the truck of the hub motors, so we had to make our own custom riser pad to allow them to fit through and feed into the enclosure. All we did was to take a quarter inch riser pad and then cut into the side of one, that way the wires could come out of the hole there when they were placed on the deck. To seal up the enclosure a little bit, we used these window sealant pieces of rubber around the edge with some sticky M3 tape on the other side. The battery is also head in place with some strong 3M double-sided tape adhesive. The remote we are using is an Inertia Nano X, which is a standard PPM 2.4GHz remote. If you're building this, we'd recommend using a Flipsky VX1 or VX2. To secure the Unity inside of the enclosure, we use some sticky Velcro. We connected the remote's receiver to the Unity using a standard male-to-male -male servo connector, even though the Unity usually uses a 3-pin JST. We then connected the sensor wires on the motors to the sensor wire ports on the Unity, using some sensor wire adapters and extensions. We then made some extender wires from the Unity to the motor phase wires, that way the enclosure could be separated from the motors at a larger distance. 
Unlike most VESCs which use the VESC tool, the Unity actually has its own programming software in the Foxbox Unity tool. The Unity tool is much easier to understand and is much more logical in terms of the way that you program it. It sets up your VESC in no time. With the motors set up and the ESC programmed, we started to mount everything inside of the enclosure to seal the board up. Next, we made a hole in the side of the enclosure using a drill bit for the power switch. The switch easily locks into the side of the enclosure using the retaining nut. We made another hole on the opposite side of the enclosure for the charge port. With everything connected and ready to go, we turned everything on one last time to test if everything worked before sealing it up. In all honesty, one of the hardest parts of this entire build was getting everything to fit under the hood and in the enclosure. This deck has so much bend to it that the enclosure has a really difficult time fitting and adapting to the deck, especially when the battery is nearly the same thickness. We mounted the enclosure to the deck by drilling a hole through both the deck and the enclosure and then using a nut and a bolt. This is what the finished project looked like, and not only does it look very nice, it also feels really nice. When you accelerate from the beginning, it feels like butter. Not even an exaggeration, it's pretty insane. Considering these motors were deemed some of the most powerful in the world at the time they were released, I was expecting them to have a little bit more power right at the beginning and some really nice startup torque. Unfortunately, the startup torque did fall a little bit short of what we were expecting, but the high speed and high end torque on these hub motors is actually pretty insane. But we're just being picky here, these hub motors are insanely powerful and they'll bomb up pretty much any hill that we could find. I would say the greatest strength to these hubs is the speeds that they can get to. On most other builds, once you get to a certain speed, the acceleration starts to lag down. But these hub motors just keep accelerating and they'll hit very high speeds. We've never actually been able to hit the top speed on this board as it's almost too scary for us as experienced riders to hit. The hubs also have an astonishingly nice feel to them. We were expecting them as hub motors to not be very smooth as the urethane around the motors is not that large. However, the additional 7mm in the upgraded 90 to 97mm hubs makes the world's difference, and these hub motors are actually extremely smooth on rough ground. This build has a very stiff deck, so we were so surprised when we found how smooth these hub motors were. We touched on it a little bit earlier, but these hubs are wicked fast. We honestly think that this might be the fastest board that we've built to date. We estimate the top speed on this board to be 37 to 40 miles an hour, which of course we haven't hit because it's just too scary. The range on this board is also an estimated 25 miles, considering we have a 518 watt hour battery, averaging 25 watt hours per mile. Now, being picky, I have to say that one of the things that I dislike about these hub motors and the board itself is how hot that they get. After going up a 3 mile long hill, which we do know is quite long, the hub motors got so hot that the board shut off. This of course is normal considering that it's a safety feature, but it's a little annoying to see that these hub motors did overheat considering the amount of design that went into them to keep them cool. However, this is a pretty minor detail and considering it was a 3 mile long, very steep hill after having gone 7 miles already, I'd say that these hub motors actually perform pretty well. So in conclusion, this board has quickly become one of the favorite e-skates that we've built. Not only does it have amazing specs, it's also so much fun to ride and so comfortable. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the talking part of this video. The remainder of this video is just going to be some writing footage, so stay tuned if you want to see the rest of that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like and comment below what you think of this build. If you have an Inertion Raptor 2, also let us know what you think of that. Finally, make sure you hit that subscribe button for some awesome eSkate content, and we'll see you guys in the next video.